How's it going guys? Joxel here with another video. Today's topic is going to be talking about how I actually started searching for my first job when I graduated my coding bootcamp. Funny enough, this video oddly is specific and relevant to my family. My younger sister just graduated the same bootcamp that I took, of course, per my recommendation. So congratulations, Lorena. I'm proud of you. Um, and this video is as relevant to you as it is to anybody else who was looking to land their first job straight out of their coding bootcamp. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I experienced, some of the things that I wish I would have known just to be able to expedite the process so I can have, so I could have landed that first job a little bit faster. Uh, and some tips and tricks can to kind of, you know, help you guys along the way. I just want to take another opportunity to share the things that I've learned and kind of give people who are starting out in the position that I was in about a couple of years ago, uh, that much more of a head start. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. When you start looking to apply, there's going to be a wide variety of jobs that all revolve around software engineering. You got front end engineers, you got back end engineers, you got solutions architects. You got a lot of f fancy different terms that can often be the completely different job than what you were expecting. So it's important to kind of do some research and understand the different terminology. If you're somebody who's really into the visual aspect of things and you want to have a direct impact on the things that a user is directly going to in interact with on a day to day basis, you'll be leaning more towards the front end roles. Front end roles often will have either front end developer in the title, or they'll often list re relevant front end technologies included in the title. Usually if they want to have some type of emphasis on that subject, for example, you may see react or react native developer or angular developer. Sometimes you'll have CSS preprocessors or other technologies included in the requirements of the body of the application. But usually these are pretty good indications that this is a front end specific role. Now, if you're somebody who prefers to work in the back end, meaning you typically want to work on the foundation, the structure and a lot of the logic and processing behind an app, whether it be a mobile app or a web app, then you're going to be looking for a lot of job titles that will either specifically say back end developer or also list a number of back end technologies. For example, Java, C++, ASP.NET, Azure, AWS, etc. Essentially, They'll list a lot of relevant technologies that are unique to backend developers, so that way you have a better idea of what's expected of you when you're going to apply, what lane you're primarily going to stay in when it comes to that particular role. Okay, so now that I've talked about the wide variety of tech jobs out there and the different terminology that relates to all the different sides, I want to talk about how to narrow your search. There are two main ways to narrow your search down, job type and job location. What I mean by job type is that there's two types of main jobs that you can apply to. You can apply to a contracting position, which are usually temporary. They often range between monthly to six months, which is the most common, um, to sometimes longer, like a year or so. The benefits of a contracting job is that you're usually getting paid a little bit more salary wise or hourly wise, but the main con is that that contract ends and there's no guarantee that you'll either be hired or that contract will be renewed. So you have to cons consistently cycle between different contracts. Some people that work, some people that doesn't. The other type is your typical like hiring position. So you're getting on a salary with somebody's actual company and you're on their specific payroll. Now, besides the job type, you also have job location. So you have three different locations you can look at. You got your local location, which is where you currently live. You have a non-local location, which is anywhere else that you'd be willing to move to key phrase willing to move to and then you have remote which obviously is you know you're working from home or working from anywhere i think it's really important to take some time to consider which of the job types and the job locations you're most interested in it's okay if you're interested in either one if you have a priority list but try to get a good idea so that way you have that much more effect to kind of narrow your search down because you're going to be applying to a lot of jobs and you don't want to have a bunch of jobs hitting you back at once and struggling to choose one because you don't have any priorities of or pros and cons as to which job is better than another based on your list of priorities. So that's why I think it's important to determine if you want to work locally, remotely, or if you're willing to move somewhere else. In addition to whether or not you want the stability of a single hired per, uh, position versus the cyclical contracting uh, positions out there that typically will get you paid more upfront or you know more in the beginning in, or this early in your career. Now, once you find a job that you're willing to apply to, I highly recommend doing a little bit of research on the company. The reason I recommend this is that it makes you a little bit more appealing in the interview process if you're kind of familiar with the company and what they do on a regular basis or 
what technology they're working with, in addition to the fact that it'll help you feel a little bit more confident in the decisions should you get hired because you've done a little bit of research of like the organizational structure or the type of technologies they may or may not use and things of that nature. I also highly recommend using Glassdoor. I am not sponsored. I suggest something I use on a regular basis when I'm looking at jobs. Glassdoor, if you don't know, is a website that allows people to put in anonymous um, and verified reviews of companies that they've worked for. Um, they stack their reviews based on different categories, such as CEO's likability to salary and payroll, management style, etc. Really good resource. You can create a free account, and it's a really good way to not only get some insight as to what employees really think about the company that you're applying to, um, how they're paying their positions. You can find people who are either currently working that position or have worked in a similar position in the past and get an idea of what they're going to try and hit you with offer-wise. Um, and overall, it's just a really good resource to kind of build some type of familiarity with what you're getting yourself into when it comes to like applying for that company. I will say it does get pretty time consuming when you're in the process of looking for jobs, you find one you want to apply to and you got to do the research, then you got to cultivate your resume to fit that company's, you know, niche or whatever. But you want the job, you've put in the work, you know what you're looking to get at the end of this, you know, you want to get that nice salary, you want to have some some consistency in your life, you're trying to level up. Um, so the grind doesn't just stop when you graduate, be it college or a boot camp or whatever self-taught method you've taken. Um, you still got to grind a little bit when it comes to actually securing that job. So again, I highly recommend doing some research on any company you apply to. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about regarding the process of, you know, applying for your jobs and everything is recruiters. Who recruiters. So I have a love hate relationship with recruiters. I love them because they were a huge boost. Whoops. I love them because they were a huge boost in the beginning of my career. Recruiters are very key if you want to have a, a, a surefire way of getting your foot in the door with some companies. But I also hated them because there are a lot of recruiters out there. The purpose of a recruiter, if you don't know, is that they usually work for a talent agency who gets paid by a lot of these companies to bring talent, or software engineers in this case, to them to interview. It makes it a lot easier because they do all the heavy legwork of reaching out and spamming a bunch of developers to see if anybody's looking for a job. Now, the reason why I have a love-hate relationship with them is because you have some who do their job really well. For example, they'll follow up with you. They'll give you a lot of information about a company they think you're matching with, um, and they'll do everything in their power to prepare you for that interview. And you have some that'll just waste your time and they'll ask you to do like a, a mock interview with them and they'll never hit back and they'll just keep spamming you for a certain information or asking you to make a bunch of different resume changes and in the end they don't really go anywhere with it so take what i'm about to say with a very fine grain of salt recruiters are very useful in the beginning of your career because they help you get some type of face time in the beginning of your career it's really hard to get your first job in my opinion the hardest app the hardest process is getting your first job simply because you have no merit. One of the, the, the best things about the software industry is you can create your own merit, but that merit has to be valued by another company, right? So how do you create your own merit? By having projects and having some type of credentials and having a degree. Those are creating your, that's different ways to create your own merit, but the company that you're applying to has to value that merit enough to give you a chance to interview with them, which is really the, the struggle when you're first starting out. So the benefit with a recruiter is a recruiter will go to a company and say, hey, I see you're looking for a developer that fits these requirements. I'm going to go and do that search for you. And a lot of times they'll just hit you up on LinkedIn or your email or whatever talent board um, you're signed up to on, you know, on the web. And they'll say, hey, you look like a perfect fit for this company that I'm looking for, you know, talent for. Would you be interested in trying to apply for them? Send me your latest version of your resume. My first job was thanks to a good recruiter that I had met. Granted, I went through like six different recruiters beforehand, um, but his name was Joey. He did an awesome job of like giving me a profile of the company, who I was interviewing with. He gave me their LinkedIn's, their GitHub profiles, um, explained to me what they were looking for and some questions they were more likely to ask. Um, and overall, that ended up being a really good experience. But I had a few bad experiences with, and a lot of wasted time with a few other recruiters before then. But I can say if it hadn't have been for Joey, I probably would have taken longer than the four months that I did take to find my first job.
So I definitely recommend uh, reaching out to your recruiters. If you want some more information about how to reach out to recruiters or how to you know, maximize the efficiency of that kind of process, let me know in the comments below um, and I'll consider adding it to the list of videos I'm gonna make. So, so far we went over the wide variety of jobs and the technical keywords that go along with them. We talked about how to narrow your search. We talked about company research and the value behind that. And we also talked about the value and the annoyance that comes along with using recruiters to get a boost in the beginning of your career. I really want to continue this video series. I'm already going to continue recording the rest. I'm just going to chop it up because these videos will get very long, very fast. Um, and I definitely want you to be able to set the pace of how much information you absorb at once. So if you have any questions or anything you want me to go into more detail from this video, hit me in the comments below. I am definitely going to be spending the next few days every morning reading through the comments, replying when I can, um, and definitely trying to kind of, you know, resonate with your feedback. If you're ready for part two, I'm going to have it linked, you know, in the little card up above. So look for the little eye to pop up, click that video, and it'll take you down to the next part in this series where we will talk about the emotions that come along with trying to get your first job because they are there and they are powerful. But thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Shout out to Nicole. I'm linking your channel in the, in the description. I have so much love for you. You, shout, you shouted me out on YouTube's story today, um, and it really meant a lot. And it really lit a fire in me to continue grinding and finish essentially scripting and writing this video here and the rest of the videos that are coming along with that. But I really do appreciate you guys. If you don't know, you want to see another black woman in tech who's really grinding and making it work. Go check out Nicole's channel. It's in the description below, but I'll catch you guys in part two.